Welcome to the November 14th meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. Uh, we have really one thing on our agenda, and that is to begin and perhaps end deliberations on the fall 2018 proposal. Before we do that, at all, as always, uh, if there are folks who would like to uh, comment on anything CPC related, now is your chance. No? Okay, we'll move on. We have no minutes to approve, and we have no chair report to report. So we will move right on into our deliberations. Just um, for folks in the viewing gallery, just for you to know that uh, this has been a process that we're about two and a half months in. We received proposals in the first part of September. We have a chance to review them, to submit written questions to the applicants. The applicants come and present to us. We have site visits, if needed, um, two different places. Then we have the public comment, which some of you came uh, last week, and now we begin deliberations. So just for you to know what that process is a fairly lengthy one. We don't come to our decisions lightly. Um, I, uh, Sarah and I have been on the phone actually quite a bit lately, um, and I think folks have in front of them perhaps the Word document that I've tried to prepare, which I hope hopefully people will find helpful. And if I could just go through it just to remind everybody of what our task is tonight. Um, so if we look at the asks from the eight proposal, it comes up to 1,588,000. Uh, our total amount available for funding this cycle is $799,403. Uh, there will be a little bit more coming in. Remember that 10 million that the state got we will not know what our percentage of that is, how much money that will be, nor when it will come in. So at this point, we're looking at this, just about $800,000. Keep in mind that even though we only have 800,000 to spend, we're actually spending another $707,000. Uh, for four projects, the Bean Farm Bond, Florence Fields, Pulaski One, and Pulaski Two. So even though it seems like, oh my goodness, we don't have that much money to spend, we actually are spending quite a bit more for those four projects that we that we have. Also keep in mind, if we can, these set-asides. Uh, so we are required to set aside 10% from the three main categories, open space, affordable housing, and historic preservation. Remember, we've already committed 75,000 to the Dial Self uh, Friends of the Homeless project on um, uh, pro no, Prospect, no, uh, Route 9, Hatfield, Hatfield yeah, Hatfield. Um, so that brings that set aside down to 89,000 uh, from the affordable housing uh, reserve. And then we have 164,000 from open space that we need to commit to that, uh, and 164,000 from historic, uh, historic preservation. Uh, the Dean Farm doesn't count towards open space? Uh, Sarah, I tried to ex explain that. Uh, Sarah, you want to talk about that? You know, could could we use our our set asides from the fact that we're already bonding? Well, we could for the principal payments. We haven't in the past because it's somewhat challenging to do accounting for that, and also because we have located more than the ten percent every year. To every okay. year. So but, but we could. Yeah, but we Theoretically, it is possible, but. Sarah would rather stay away from it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Um, it's it's since uh, since I've been on the CPC, I cannot remember a time where we've had uh, over, over half of our proposals sort of tied into pending grants. So our consequences of saying uh, no seem to be a little elevated this time. Because remember, if we say no, then um, that those those grants that uh, have you either come in, in the case of the Birds Fog uh, multi-use trail, or ones that are, are hopeful, uh, the Pine Barrens, the park accessibility of Florence Fields, uh, if, the, if we don't have a local match, then those grants will disappear. So that's something that sort of complicates our 
I think, Julie. And I'm, I'm just thinking about the amount of money we have, the amount of questions we have, the cycle, and that, that, that question we asked last year, too, what about cycle two? Correct. And essentially, if we spend it all out now, cycle two is probably limited to only small grants with whatever comes in from the state. Is that a Correct. Yes. Um, well, yes and no. I mean, if, if in fact we committed all of our money and then these grants did not come in, then no, in the right. case of all of those uh, grants, that money would come back yeah, to us. Yeah. Um, so and I have calculated if, uh, if, if we committed everything, 466200 would be returned to us if in fact those grants were unsuccessful. So, I thought the time barons that were going to proceed were regardless and still wanted our money. Correct. But if you look at the others, it still totals 466000 according to my thing, which is which includes Village Hill. Is that right? Yeah. Um, but Village Hill, we won't hear. Maybe my math is wrong, but we can, we, we can get back to that. Uh, let's see. Any other? Yeah. Um, maybe this is already on the... Uh, on the agenda, but I would be helpful to me if Sarah could go over that portion of her email today with regard to the bonding in the future. Okay. Um, Sarah, you want to do that now? Sure. So if you look at the bonding capacity tab on the financial sheet, which I don't print because it just prints so poorly, it looks so ugly, uh, we're fairly heavily bonded out through FY21. So if we if the committee were to recommend bonding to city council, it would be possible to create sort of a, a custom bond where we would delay the majority of the principal payments until FY22. Have we done things like that in the past? Uh, we haven't. We've never had a reason to previously. And the rationale for that, Sarah, would be that it would free us up in the next few years as we retire some of these bonds? It would. So we'd still be making the interest payments, um, which are a smaller amount, but saving the majority of the and that would be done on a five-year or ten-year basis. So we don't really have any gauge from the city council about how they would feel about us taking on that kind of commitment. I mean, they, every time the uh, CPC has recommended bonding in the past, the city council has moved forward with that. Right, but we haven't recommended a bond that that doesn't go into effect until five years from now. Well, it's it still would. Um, we would. We would begin making the interest payments immediately, but we delay the principal and so on. And it city council just doesn't, doesn't generally get involved in the specifics at the time of the CPC recommendation. Okay. Thank you. Any, any other questions for Sarah? Uh, in the past, what we've done is uh, begin going through proposals one by one with our shopping cart uh, system. A proposal is made um, and seconded. We discuss it, uh, and then we vote to put it in the shopping cart. Putting the shopping cart does not mean we're checking out. It just means that it is in the shopping cart. Last time, as you may or may not recall, we voted at the end for the shopping cart as a whole, and there was some critique of that when we were uh, doing our final thing and people wanted each item removed from the shopping cart and voted against so that we so that folks who felt strongly could express that in their vote. So does that make sense to continue that? Okay, and that um, uh, Linda, I think you're the one that wanted the, the voting with each item as it comes out of the shopping so I cart. Still, I agree with myself. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with myself. But I often disagree with myself. But, uh, so uh, in the in the word doc that I that I gave you, I thought that the the two proposals that were the most um, clear cut, I suppose, because they are unencumbered by any grants pending or by the city already committing money to, is the community garden not weed removal and the um, and the Ar armory uh, historic preservation project. Can I just ask folks in the in the audience, how many of you here specifically for the garden project? Okay, so that's most people. Uh, so with with committee folks' permission, can we start on the uh, the garden proposal? Is that okay to go through it in this in this order, or do 
keep out another order that they would prefer. Okay. Uh, some of you may have seen the article, the front page article, in the newspaper today uh, on the on the um, community garden proposal. Uh, so that was uh, that was done with uh, with Sarah being quoted, at least information from Sarah. So Sarah, thank you for calling because that things because that reporter back. So again, the way we're doing this is uh, if someone can make a motion regarding money. <coughs> There will be a second, perhaps, on that. We will discuss and then put it or not put it into the shopping cart. The way that we've done this in the past is that we can reconsider it at any time, but if it's not in the shopping cart at the, at the beginning, it's probably not going to go in there at the end. Although, at any time, for any reason, tonight we can, we can uh, step back and, and reconsider. So is there a motion regarding the community garden project? I, I make a motion to put in the shopping cart, not because I'm necessarily in favor of it, but because I'd like the opportunity to have the committee discuss it. Okay. Do you want to put a mount uh, request on it? Amount of twelve thousand. Okay. Is there a second? Sure. Okay. Uh, discussion. Um, this was a, this was a difficult one. I. It was, it was the result of a lot of volunteer effort and donated time and concern. Um, but I think some, possibly some steps were, were missed in the, in the process and I have a hard time endorsing this at this point. Um, I wouldn't reject it out of hand in the future if the garden can come together and, and form some kind of a consensus about uh, how they'd like to proceed. It's a problem that needs to be addressed. Uh, I'm not sure we're at the point where we know what the best way is, and I don't think this committee is the place to make that determination. I think the community gardens need to make that determination for themselves and then potentially come back before the committee if they feel it's appropriate and uh, put in another Other folks? Joe? I would <clears throat> second everything Linda just said. Um, I think I think the case hasn't been made that <clears throat> to me at least that 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 the proposed use of a, a human carcinogen is the only way to go. Um, I would also be open to look at this upon further review I think it has been demonstrated that the proposed method is controversial enough that I don't think um, CPC should should be in a position of using uh, tax dollars to support um, the distribution of this substance um, the the community gardens folks may very well um, choose to go that route anyway and that's their decision, but I don't think I don't think we um, should be subsidizing that moves. Um, so I'm not in support of funding this at this time. Julie? Yeah, I also don't support funding this, and I'm going to echo what Linda said. I really see this as for me, it's really a, a, an issue of process at the community gardens and with the leadership of the community gardens and the gardeners together as a group making a decision about this. I think the question of what we're dispersing on invasives is a really tricky question for us as a committee to address. We've we've gone different directions with different pieces of property that have come to us and asking the same and asking these same questions about the the, the way in which we're handling invasives in the city. So uh, we've been asked for funding for uh, the controlled invasives at um, Fitzgerald Lake at, uh, I forget the name of the community out on um, Lathrop. Uh, thank you, at Lathrop. And, and we're going to get asked again. And it's, it's, I feel like in this instance, we don't have to make a decision, but at some point, that, that's on us. We're going to have to get more understanding. And it might be that we're going to have to ask for different information in that pre-grant phase 
or in the grant phase, the questions that we're going to have to ask as people come in and say, we need to control invasives in whatever the next area is, be it a conservation area or, open or some other type of open space. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to be looking at this again. And we're going, to, we're going to have to be prepared for that. But in this case, for me, this is really a process issue. I don't think that the garden committee was open enough with all the gardeners to say this is what's coming into your into the into the land where you're going to grow vegetables. Other comments? Jack? Uh, yeah, the issue I was going to raise is that this is a five-year grant as well and I think it could be handled differently because it's to, to control the invasives it's going to be a process and uh, I think we could check in with that process if uh, money was awarded every year as a small grant uh, or an initial amount was smaller that would start the process but uh, I do agree with, it's difficult for this committee to make a, a judgment on the process when we're just asking people are asking us for the money to do it but we're actually in essence weighing in on the practice of be using the herbicide so uh, but I, I also think there's funding 12,000 over five years is like kind of jumping the gun uh, I echo uh, everyone's comments um, I did have to leave partway through the presentation with the comment section the last time we met um, but it was clear to me from what I heard that there were some internal struggles and I didn't think that this committee was the entity to solve those. I thought that the um, organization itself needed to resolve those before it um, it, were, it would be a comeback um, for funding or at least receive funding. Um, <coughs> I, I thought that the application was was very thoughtfully put together. Uh, I'm not convinced, however, that the method um, long term is going to be effective because of the steep slope that it does not this invasive descends down and the inability to alter that slope in any radical way to remove it um, without compromising the integrity of the slope. So that was a concern too that it um, if there wasn't a really, really long term commitment after we're not involved, um, that they would have a problem again. Um, so I would not support the application. Uh, Chris, do you have anything to add? So, um, I, yeah, I think we're being asked to do a couple of things that I'm not sure fall within our purview. The first is to adjudicate the decision-making process at, at the sovereign entity over which we have no control. Um, and the second is to um, make a determination on science, which is certainly beyond my, my capacity. Um, so I'm not inclined to move forward with it at this time, although I, I, certainly, I'm, I certainly would entertain it again in the future. Um, I think Julie has made a good point. This is not the last time we're going to do this, and it might be one of the things we want to do during the off season is to come up with a determination on how we're going to move these things forward in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I think would be appropriate is, is that this is, this is city property, and um, I would like to know what the city's stewardship methodology is for these types of things, whether they even care. Um, I, I'm sure that they do, but I would like I would like to have somebody. I would like to be able to identify somebody within the administration, you know, the city's administrative, who who, you know, who oversees, you know, whether it's a DPW or or or, or someplace else, who who. Um, is involved in these types of decisions um, where they fund it internally and, and act accordingly, where it doesn't come before us. Because I'm sure that this is something where other thinking has, has been done, uh, you know, other than by us. And I, I, I'd be interested in hearing where they've come down on this as part of our sort of you know, framework for moving forward on these things. Yeah, the, the garden is actually under the Recreation Commission. That's and, right. And yeah. I can tell you that oh, well, I, uh, this hasn't actually come up at a recreation commission right. meeting. But the the director of the rec uh, of our department of recreation does not meet with the uh, garden committee regularly. Right, that's specific to the Garden Commission, and I, I, and I appreciate that, but I'm just talking about, you know, when the city decides it's going to deal with, with yeah. invasives, how does the city uh, deal yeah. with it? 
But I think right. that the city deals with it in different ways. If it's mm -hmm. wild land or Sorry. if it's a vegetable garden, it would have a big, even the playing fields down in Florence, you know, yeah. uh, have were, are treated differently than the, the wild mm -hmm. conservation land. Yeah. And then Fitzgerald Lake being being uh, handled through Broadbrook, right? So Broadbrook has taken on the stewardship of that space. So we have lots of different spaces with lots of different stewards. Mm -hmm. So we may never get a perfect answer, but I'd like I would like more input from from the, the city. We're we're not the stewards of the property; we're the stewards of the money. Right. So um, I would I would like to hear what you know what their feelings are on this in some way. Sir, did you mention that the city council, or at least one city council member, was beginning to take a look at this? Yes, to my knowledge, Councilor Klein is uh, working on putting together a committee to investigate. Okay. I'm looking at Any further discussion on this? So the motion on the floor is to uh, appropriate 12100 for the community gardens, not we. Removal project, all those in favor, all those opposed. Okay, so you got that? All right, it is not in the shopping cart. Uh, folks in the audience, uh, most interested in the garden, you're certainly welcome to stay. Uh, or we will not think you rude if you get up and walk out on a, a, any. Uh, so on my list, next up, again, unencumbered by pending grants, is the uh, Armory Project, Historic Preservation, uh, Everking Street Armory. The request is for $392,068. Is there a motion on the floor? Second. And a second. Okay, so the motion is to fund the King Street Armory Project at $392,000. And $68. Once again, let's keep in mind that we do have a set aside from the historic uh, preservation reserve of $164,000. This is one of two historic preservation projects in front of us, and the other, of course, is Ford's Library, whose request comes in at $400,000. Uh, discussion? Um. I feel pretty unsettled about this application. I don't, I don't think they're ready um, to take on the burden of public money at this time. Um, I would be perfectly happy to give them a smaller grant to help them bring some professionals on to put together the scope of work. Uh, it's totally unclear to me what this money would be used for, um, uh, other than general sort of you know, repointing sort of here. You know, uh, so I just don't think it's it's a, a, a specific enough scope of work to to approve. Um, this one. Thank you, Linda. Uh, I would agree with that. I think they did a great job uh, in the application, talking about the historic nature of the building. I think it's pretty clear that it's one of the few uh, interesting buildings in that stretch of, um, of King Street, so it's, it is quite visible, but um, I don't think they wrap their arms around the, the true extent of the work there, nor the work that, that this would be paying for, nor the requirements that these uh, public dollars would, would impose on them. And, um, I'm also a little concerned about the size of the ask in proportion to the, the total project. And I'm running through my head the, um, the lawsuit about use of, of um, public dollars for private organizations. And they do serve the public, and they are a nonprofit. Um, but this is a sizable contribution towards their operations. And I'm a little concerned about whether it would pass muster. It's, those lines are very blurry and unclear, but it does raise concerns in my mind. Well, I think that points to the need for this organization specifically to have a very specific scope of work identified, yes. which would put us all at ease. Mm -hmm. 
as well as maybe some more documentation of bidding uh, or you know the, the information on the costs the backup was not to my you know, understanding <laughs> Mark, do you want to speak at the term says that our historic preservation person? The Historical Commission supported the application um, because the building is historically significant. Um, it's a significant resource within the city, certainly worth preservation. Um, I think uh, just um, I would personally support everything that's been said here. Uh, I had a lot of concerns about um, what the application was actually funding, what the, we would be actually funding. And I agree with David that I think it would be great for them to come back to us um, with kind of a comprehensive proposal to get some real professionals involved, which didn't seem like they had done before. Um, I was also concerned that this uh, organization has owned this building for a while, but there's been a lot of different maintenance on it. And they just built a brand new building. Um, so I was, was a little bit concerned about their commitment to it um, long term, not putting their resources into it. So I would agree with um, David and Linda. This reminds me a lot of our conversation we had a couple sessions back about the uh, Smith Charities, where there's a mismatch between oh, yeah. the mission of the organization and the means of this. I have no question that it's a, clearly a historic resource that should be preserved in some in a vacuum. <laughs> um, but is this the right? And, and then this is the whole we live in. Unfortunately, not every there's no caretaker for every historic building. Um, but, so, but I think we were able to, without them reapplying, we were able to give them a partial funding. Is that, my, is that right? Do I have that memory right? That we gave them partial funding to go out and find somebody to help them? Yeah, so their funding was for their initial, initial scoping of what they needed to do. So their the water structures were part. Yes. Which would be a great thing for this organization to do, the armory, if they're <coughs> not, um, service line, if they're committed to that. I, I think I'd like to see a, a refreshed application specifically for that. Not not try to carve out a little piece and tell them what to do. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tur um, I had the same concern with um, public dollars for, for private operations. I think that, that kind of stood out to me. Um, ServiceNet, um, from what I can tell, is a very robust organization um, someone already mentioned funding the new the new building they opened up on Village Hill um, I kind of going through the application it didn't quite again like somebody else already said too I didn't quite follow what the what the funds would actually be used for I, I would like to see um, a much more more narrow um, application, but I do believe um, um, the building should be preserved and saved. And, and I just think um, I think they were asking for three hundred ninety-two thousand, um, which is is just an awful lot of money. And it's, um, aside from the fact that it's far beyond the resources that we have. <coughs> I'm, I'm just looking at the dollars, and because we have a shortage of them, that this application doesn't stack up with the other competing requests. So just on that basis alone, the thing doesn't leverage any other money, and um, it's just uh, I think not as uh, it just doesn't have the value that some of the other proposals have. So it kind of loses out in my mind with the competition of requests that we have tonight. Do we? Yeah, I will. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Chris? Me too. Are we ready to vote? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, the motion at the floor, uh, on the floor is three hundred ninety. Yeah, $390,068 for the Armory Historic Preservation. All those in favor? All those opposed? Are those seriously dense coming up? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Uh, Sarah, did you get that vote? Not to diminish the excitement of the vote. <laughs> <laughs> over the random person in the crowd, not random. I've seen you say Yeah. I'll vote for anything. Wow. Or not. Okay, moving right along. Um, and again, without objection, we'll go through uh, the, the, uh, the word doc. Uh, Ford's library, let's remember the ask is for 400000 The request is 800000 the city has already committed, uh, theoretically, to 400000 Sarah and I were a little unclear whether that's bonding or whether that's coming up with funds. Did you get clarification on that? I did not, know. no. I, okay. I, so I, I, I don't know if it's coming up with existing capital funds or... Chris? Um, I don't know. I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. Uh, why don't we, let's do a motion and then... And then we, uh, um, Fund for library grant at four hundred thousand dollars. Okay, second. Second. Okay, uh, Chris. Um, on the issue of the bond, if the city's going to bond for four hundred thousand, that's that's their problem, not ours, right? Correct. Correct. Right. Totally. So how do we get them to bond for eight hundred thousand? <laughs> no, I'm serious. I mean, you know, why why are we why are we being asked for four hundred thousand if the city's real, willing to put their credit line? up for half of it. I, I don't understand and why. why there, there may be levy limit issues. There may be other okay. challenges to that. I, I don't know. Well, I'd like to know. Well, it's a good question because, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the 164 in Historic Reserve with only now one historic um, application in front of us. And should the city be able to bond more? We still might be able to provide some money on this, but it would give us a little more leverage with the other grants. Well, in the 164, it doesn't have it's to be spent. all go, right. It doesn't have to be spent. We don't have to spend yeah, a penny no. of it this session. Exactly. So. I, w I was intrigued by the opportunity to phase in the, the window replacement. Yeah, it's well, a long-term yeah. project, and it mm -hmm. seemed to make sense that high-priority windows could be done right away and still uh, have a chance for another funding cycle to go through so that we could fund the rest of it at another at a later date. Sarah, you had spoken to me about the economy of scale, that there would be cost savings by doing this all at once. Do you want to address that? There, there would be. Um, like any construction project, the city can only contract for uh, the funding that's on hand. So a, a company may be providing a higher plan of no cost if there's only half the window getting cost. Uh, but I don't know what the exact numbers in that cost areas would be. Uh, they did on, on a per window basis for add-ons, so you could lock in a price? Uh, potentially, yes. It could be done as an alternate. But there are some limitations. In the Sarah and I also discussed that if, in fact, bonding was something we wanted to consider this project would be the most uh, likely or easy to bond um, you want to address that Sarah why why this one um, it's it's city owned property and it a uh, construction project of this type wouldn't carry the same types of challenges that bonding some of the other projects would further discussion Linda um, if we just talk about the bonding for a minute. I am not in favor of any additional bonding. I think we're getting close to um, maxing out our bonding capacity, and we've already, we've, for the next few years, half the funds are going for the bond principal and interest. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think we, we don't know what's coming down the pike. It's, it's really hard when you have good proposals not to fund them, but I think we've got to reserve some for the future, and uh, bonding does not do that. So 
so I think we can hedge our bets on this. I think we can fund it 100,000 or something. Um, hopefully preserve some for the next cycle. They're not going to be going up. They're not going to be doing this project until the summer anyway, I presume. If, there's, if we have a, uh, a winter, spring set round, they can apply for more funds. We'll see where we're at at that point in terms of dollars. We might be able to increase it at that point. We'll have the, the uh, a reserve for um, historic preservation anyway. Sixty-four thousand. If they fund it, one hundred thousand. Martha, you want to speak as our historic person? Well, I wanted to just um, say that I thought that the proposal proposal was very well composed um, in comparison, say, to the. Armory project. Um, we really had a lot of excellent information, and there was a lot of thought put into um, pricing this, designing this, pricing this. Um, you know how to save the windows that are there. All of the th those things I thought were really great, and it was well presented. And also, it's such a valuable resource in the community. This is a public site, and it's used by um, you know so many members of the community and beyond. So I think that's very important. I would agree with Linda about the bonding. And I would be in favor of supporting the phase of this. To address someone's question from earlier about unit prices, that's in the specifications, so any bidders do have to give them unit prices mm -hmm. down to uh, per linear foot for three quarter round trim and et cetera. Right. So I don't yeah. know, I mean, I guess if they know it's going to be a phase project, that unit cost will increase to some degree, but all the bidders be addressing the same one. Mm -hmm. Thanks, sir. Uh, Linda, do you think uh, down the road, as in next cycle, there will be any other historic preservation projects uh, coming in to us? Uh, I'm sorry, did I say Linda? That's okay. Martha, sorry. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. So nothing that is on nothing your radar? Um, yeah. I wasn't at the last historical commission meeting, though. I just said that. There may be. And Sarah, do you know any? I am I I'm not aware of any no one's coming to ask about it. Okay. Are we gonna see more about the gravestones or is that like right? Isn't there aren't there next parts to the gravestones? Mm -hmm. That's when we read that project, that was how I read it. Um there's more work to be done. Yeah, do you, yeah. so a contract should be awarded within the next few weeks. There, there isn't any additional staff capacity at this point for more projects beyond the funding available, but I'm sure that DPW will, will return at some point. For the gravestones. Well, if we partially fund this one, we, that's already two projects that we are telling to come back for next time, so yeah. I don't know that we need to worry about a third. And then it's going to more of a cover us if we need to match our, our commitment of 164. Mm. I should just say I totally agree with the partial funding. And I think it also may provide the added benefit of prioritizing and doing the most important of those first, you know, mm -hmm. special mm -hmm. collections. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and they thought that through. Just, just right, or rather than just the order that the contractor wants to do it. I, I also think it's good that the, the city is bonded at 400000 so if we give them 100000 that's 500000 right. to work with. Right. That's a good portion of the project that would be underway and, and be able to be accomplished. Mm -hmm. Can we change our motion to 100,000 then? Uh, if the motion is on the floor, we'll have to, whoever made the motion would have to change. Is that how it works? I think so. Who made the motion? I did. So um, is 100,000 a number <coughs> that people here are comfortable with? Uh, let's, how about a little more discussion, make sure everyone's had a chance. Okay. Um, Julie, I think, did, did you speak to that? I'm comfortable. With hundred thousand, Sarah, can you refresh my memory again? We've asked you this every time. When will the the the, the um, bean farm is the first to be uh, retired? Is that correct? I mean, can you update someone when these are going to go? Is that easily accessible for us? I thought Bean Farm was 
going to go forever. Yeah, see, I see some bean farm funding 20, 20, in 27. 27. 27. Yeah. It's only $5,000 in 27. No, but it's, yeah, I, but it's still going on. In 20, what? 26. 26 and 27. Yeah. The Pulaski Park is the first one. <coughs> and what year is that? FY20 as in next year. So we're FY19 now. 21, sorry, FY20. 21. So at the end of FY21, which is, what's that, June of 22? Is that correct? Uh, June of 21. June of 21. So this is the first phase of class year, I don't have overlap. So we are done, and so we have a year. We have three more cycles. These two are different, and we're done with oh, Pulaski okay. Phase One. one, and that one. Oh, yeah. I don't think it drops off. Where's the big drop off? That's the biggest one. That's two hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah. Well, two eighty-three when we get the oh, okay. add, adding the uh, interest. Uh, okay. So we're yeah. So, so that represents the big drop off for FY twenty-two. In bonding obligation. Great. So, but, so we're so we've got three more cycles of really being short, and then theoretically we're, we're um, have a little more available to us. Further discussion on the Forbes on the Forbes Library. Um, I would like to amend my motion to fund the Forbes Library project at a hundred thousand dollars. Is there a second for the amendment? Second. We need that. Further discussion on that? Ready to vote? Okay, all in favor? All opposed? That is unanimous. Now, the question was that Chris or I think a number of folks raised is um, about bonding, and I don't know, Sarah, if we could have more information next time we come back. If that's possible. Uh, I can give you any information, like what, what? Well, the question, Chris, you were asking is, is, is it bond, is, is it being bonded, and if not, why oh, can't Oh, the, the general, city, general obligation city bonds yeah, as yeah. opposed to CPI, I will find out yeah. I mean, it may just not be financially possible to bond. Right, I'm, just, I'm curious. I mean, they were, willing, they were willing to go a long way, but I'm, I'm, I'm interested in knowing why they would go further. And that will, that will, so any information that you get, perhaps at the next meeting, that would be helpful. Okay, moving right along to Florence Fields uh, Recreation. The amount of questions is 100,000. Is there a motion on the floor? Uh, move to fund it in bulk and then pass it. Uh, second? Second. Okay, we'll end it with a second. Uh, so again, this is one of those, now we're moving into all of our grant spending and a little more complexity. The 400,000 park grant uh, asks for a third to be matched. So the 100,000 amount requested, sorry, if I'm wrong, is not the full match. There's additional private not, or, or public amounts that are being raised to make that match. Uh, the thought is that in December, is when we will be notified of our acceptance. If that local match, um, if, we, if they don't have, a, if we don't have a local match, the grant disappears. Uh, if the grant does, if the park grant does not come through at four hundred thousand, the CPC request will be withdrawn. So they don't want our hundred thousand. They will uh, do what they do. So discussion on this. Uh, Julie, you want to start as the Parks and Rec first? Um, yeah, this is the ongoing work at, at Florence Field. It's been a really tremendously well-used and popular space in the city. We feel pretty confident about the park grant. We've had really good success with park grants before. We thought we might even have heard before this meeting, but um, 
uh, it's an election year, so things were delayed. But in December, we'll hear, and, and I, you know, we think we'll see some money out of the park fund. So, hope you support it. Uh, Julia or and or Sarah, does when you say we'll see some money out of it, is it uh, is it four hundred thousand or nothing? Yeah. Okay, so you either get the whole thing or you, or, or you don't. Yeah. So if the four hundred thousand comes in, then we have to come up with hundred thousand. Correct, sir. Um, the the city would have to. I mean, this is the amount that recreation is missing from their match. And is it, is it a dollar for dollar decrease in the park grant for, if you don't match, or is it mm -hmm. multiplier? Uh, I I'm not sure that's ever happened. Um, <laughs> Might um, I probably rec would have to find something to strike from the project budget, um, or really work hard on additional fundraising. But I, I guess I'm asking since it's it's like a three to one match or something. Yeah. I don't know. So, so, so the, do you the lose, state provides you lose three state dollars for every one dollar of missing match. Yeah, that, that's one way to look at. Other discussion? Yeah, I guess I was not convinced of the equal merit of each of the requests. Um, and I thought we were going to, maybe we weren't clear enough, but I was kind of expecting that we'd get some kind of a prioritization. Um, you mean of the different elements of the Yes, project? exactly. And Sarah, you wouldn't get anything like that, or did I make that up? You mean uh, the, in terms from, of specific, from, from, the, from the children's playground to the backstops? Yes, 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 yes. Julie, do you want to? You don't have that. I don't know. I don't know how specific the committee may have been. When, when asking about that. But I, I, I didn't hear it at our last commission meeting. So there was no conversation about how to prioritize all the items. Uh, do you have any sense of that yourself, or is that something you just haven't thought of? Me personally? Yes. Yeah. Um, so it's not it's beyond your yeah <laughs> it is I mean yeah I mean this it, it, to, to me this gets to the whole issue of how much do we micromanage and I agree with you Linda when I look at the proposal I think solar powered scoreboards seriously do we really do we really need that um, do we need back um, uh, you know s s some of the items requested seem much stronger than others, uh, but I, I don't think that's up to me to determine, I guess. Uh, no, but it would, I, I agree with you. Uh, that's why I would like their prioritization list so I could figure out what their top items are and therefore which, how much money we really should be looking for. It's important to give them because I don't think the entire 100,000 is important to give, but I don't know what the right figure is. And given all the other asks, we're, somebody's not going to get what they're asking for. So I was just looking for some help in making that decision. I think we asked them some questions around that, and I think that I'm reading tealage, but I think because they have an application out right now for 400,000, I think. If they're reluctant to go on record saying, "Oh, this is the part we're not interested in," because who knows how who hears what. I have to say, though, I, I think when you think about a three-to-one leveraging of the dollars and such a clear whether you know are, is it too fancy for people in Florence? To see? Yeah, I don't know, but I mean, I think generally speaking, these are very clear, publicly used facilities that are also very visible use of CPC funding, which goes a long way um, towards community support for CPC or CPA. Um, it seems like a very easy, for me, it's a very easy approval. Julia, do you see this as the last ask from Florence Field? So. It's the final phase of the application. <laughs> this is, yeah, this is the phase six. This is supposed to be our final phase. <laughs> Get more playground, finish out the baseball fields, do a little more work on shade, you know, make it. 
make it nicer. It's pretty nice as it is, but make it nicer. Sure. The solar, the solar uh, power ones are much better than the coal fired ones. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the building down there, I mean, it is a really unusual recreation area. And, and there, was, there was a lot of fighting around that building as it got built because the wrong roofing was put on, because it is actually, a sol there are solar panels on the roof. And we are, we are, much of what's going on down there is being done off of the solar panels. And that's why it's, you know, I get it, a solar panel baseball <laughs> board sounds really hokey, but it's really consistent with what everything else is going on in the field. Yeah. And and the care of that field is really costly because this is our one organic recreation field in the city. It, it, you know, there's a lot of effort going into the fields down there. And it, it looks beautiful. Well, after two weeks ago in the rain, a little less that's so, true. but, <laughs> but, it, but it is, you know, it's holding up really well and it has an incredible amount of use all day long. So, I mean, the kids aren't playing on the fields that, that loop around it. We're sort of tracking this. It's amazing how many people are down there at different times of day. It really has a lot of use. And now with that, that shelter and the solar powered scoreboard, <laughs> we'll have our meetings there. We'll keep score on the scoreboard. <laughs> all right, other folks weighing in on forum stories, Chris? So um, I, I should have done this before, but I'm looking at the total request is 626. Um, our donation and the grant is five, so that's 126,000 not accounted for. Where does that come from? They have, they've indicated 50,000 fundraising already on hand. There's something from Parks and Rec. Is there 70? That's what I'm looking for. That's on the bottom of page six. Okay. I have a mix. Oh, yeah. 126,000 in donation and work at the friends. Mm -hmm. friends. Does that answer your question, Chris? It does. Thank you. Other folks want to weigh in? Are we ready to vote? So the motion on the floor is to appropriate 100,000 for the Final, final, final <laughs> phase of the Florence Fields Recreation, which when you add up uh, Bean Farm and Florence Fields, and my goodness, we've really created a remarkable recreation area. Anyway, that's editorializing. Uh, all those in favor? All those opposed? All right. We are halfway there, folks, sort of. Okay, next. Uh, item on the agenda is uh, Village Hill. Let's keep in mind we already awarded them $50,000 in 2017. And also remember that the proposal was shifted a little bit to put uh, full funding into the one phase where remember they were asking for sort of the two different things and one's already been funded. So is there a, the ask is for 300000 is there a motion on the floor? Sure, I would move to support the Village Hill at $300,000. So second? Second. Uh, Sarah, you wanna talk a little bit about what came in perhaps since our last meeting, which is the Affordable Housing Tax Credit? Sure, actually. I'll just, should I just read this email? I, I requested some additional information to Flora just to, so the community could be kept up to date. Um, so I asked what would the effect of possible partial funding would be. Uh, partial funding would worsen the existing challenge faced by the project of having sufficient resources overall. We are presently value engineering the construction scope of their design team to reduce the estimated construction costs and close the gap between sources and uses. Given the Northampton CPC's past levels of support for affordable housing projects, we are mindful that a comparatively low CPA contribution Contribution for North Commons might signal to the state lukewarm local support for the project, or I guess our hope is to signal strong local support. We believe that statements by community members last week, as well as multiple ways the project fulfills CPC priorities, warrant a strong show of support. And then an update on the other four funding sources is that they plan to apply in the coming DHCD one stop rental round in February, um, and then awards are expected to be made in July or August for that program. 
And once again, can you explain about the affordable housing tax cut? I believe it is Bloomingdale's more money than I did. I believe it's part of that one stop yes, application. So they so would not have been awarded yet. Okay. But they, they were awarded for the other phase of the other portion of the project. The one that has been fully funded now. Okay. It, it, but that has nothing to do with this project. These are two completely they separate. Them. Uh, Linda, as one of our housing folks, do you want to speak to this? It's a dagger in my heart to say I would, um, given given the resources that we have, given that we've already given fifty thousand, and the city I think has put in as well one hundred and fifty thousand of CDBG, fifty to the other project and 100000 to this. Um, I think there's strong support and I, I have a hard time going with the 300000 They They do have a budget gap, that's what they said last time, like something on the order of one, yeah, a million, one and a half million dollars. Um, I don't think, I think if we reduce this to 150. That's not going to make or break anything. So if we reduce to 150, it would still be a three hundred thousand dollar commitment by the part of the city. Is that correct? The fifty we for put in for both projects combined. Yes. I thought just for this, because we already put in fifty just but for that this. Was, but that was used. For the, was for that the, was used for the other project. It was originally all one. Right. So okay. Thank you. That and fifty thousand of CDPG, I think went to call it phase one. Okay. So phase two is a hundred thousand of CEPG and this application that they're going to be putting in now is a hundred thousand CEPG plus whatever. So if we put in 150, it would be 250,000 from the city for this phase. And you feel that that would be a match that would be, that would move the proposal uh, that would not hinder the movement of the proposal. I can't. I can't say that I have my ear to the ACT. There's been so much support from the city all along, the, and the larger community for the potential project, as well as the city. I, I have a hard time seeing them walking away because I don't know, fifty thousand or hundred thousand that. Uh, I mean, we can write letters explaining why that it, it uh, was not any lack of strong support, it was a lack of funds. Uh, Jeff, as our other housing person, you want to speak to that? Well, we can do a um, process check question right now. How much have we already spent? Just 200000 Um, I'm in support of the motion for uh, the full amount. Um, this is the only housing project before us. Um, I think the, uh, the of the three main categories that we uh, spend funds on, I think public housing uh, trails the other two categories. I thought the project was very well presented. Um, I thought the, um, the public comment was very positive. Um, I think there is um, an urgent need for, for public housing in the city, and we funded them 50000 the last time and told them they came back uh, to come back, and they did so bigger and stronger and more developed um, than the first time they came before us for a, the Village Hill project, and uh, I support the full amount. Other folks, just want to we are we are funding eighty thousand dollars for dial self. Okay, I'm reading something else. Right? So that is technically this round, right? Correct. So, okay. Now I don't think the project is going to not happen because yeah, it's, some of these projects if we don't put in the money they don't happen. I think this one going to happen and it's it's hard to say don't give them all the money but we're going to have to say no to something else that I think is also quite important so if we can 
have the project, the project can still move forward, and I, I think it can, and we can as well do some of these other things. That's where I, how I'd like to split up the money. Martha? I don't really have anything to tell. Chris? I'm going to pass. Thanks. That's a hard one. Uh, Julia? I think I want to see it stay in the card at 300000 and then we come back around, re-examine it in the context of all the other things we're putting into the card. Yeah, that sense, yeah, sure. that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. <laughs> that's why committees work well sometimes. Someone articulates what other people can't quite get. Uh, Jack? Well, I was thinking of it backwards and saying we should put 150 into the cart and then <laughs> come back and look at it later <laughs> to maybe up it if we had funds left over. So I was looking at it in reverse. Uh, Dave? I don't think that one. So the motion on the floor, uh, unless amended, is for $300,000 to be put into the shopping cart for the Village Hill project. And as Julia so articulately reminded us, we have a, a chance to revisit this as we go to checkout. Uh, is there any other discussion on this? We are ready to vote. Okay, all those in favor, putting it in at three hundred thousand dollars. All those opposed. So that was unanimous, Dave. That your hand went up. Yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Next up, the park accessibility improvements. Um, Another grant pending one. The ask is for sixty-six thousand two hundred. The ADA grant is that is that a state or is that a federal thing? That is a state. Grant. That's a state grant. Uh, we will be notified in January, and that's two hundred fifty thousand grant. Again, the ask is for the match. Um, and again, if the grant doesn't come in, then the CPC request will be withdrawn. Is there a motion on the floor for this one? I'll move to um, put 66,200. A second, thank you, a second? Second. Okay, discussion? Well, somebody's gotta say something. So, um, <laughs> this was the lowest priority that that Wayne identified. Um, and I feel a little squeezed by, as you were indicating, the, the stakes are higher because there are these grants that have been applied for, and without the match, the grant goes away. But um, regardless of that, I think we've got to figure out what really are the most important places to spend the money. This is, this is not, if, it's valuable, of course it's valuable, but it's, it's uh, I don't think it contributes as much as some of the others. So I would look to be holding some money in reserve, but not, not support funding. Other comments? Um, I, I had a few issues with the way this grant was put together and the budget was put together. Um, it seemed really, I had a hard time understanding where all of these um, repairs were going to be taking place. And this is, you know, and I think these are important, and I especially do this past month that I've had been having to walk assisted um, on uneven sidewalks. I know what that feels like. Um, um, it just, it, it, I had a hard time getting a handle on exactly uh, where the repairs were being done, what the locations were, um, and also how the costs were arrived at. But it also does seem like something that uh, could be uh, phased or scaled back. We could make a small contribution to it. Um, so. The 66 is the, is 
comes in at 21 percent or whatever of the budget that's the required ask for the 88 grant is that correct sir that's correct. so we don't fund it the 88 grant comes in we turn back the 88 grant does that really piss them off the ADA folks uh, that they, and and does it make it less likely that a grant would be funded in the future it, it could yeah um, so this happens fairly frequently with open space acquisitions where a community will say, oh yeah, we're good to go, we're good to go, and then almost at the end of the fiscal year, they'll say, we're actually not. And then they go to the next community on the list, which increasingly, unfortunately, has been Northampton because they know that we can tend to do things at the drop of a hat. But then, although it's not written anywhere, I would say it definitely decreases your chances of money. In the future. Um, I also would add that of the, the two grants from the Conservation Commission that are still up in the air, the, uh, the primaries acquisition and this one, the commission is much more optimistic about the primaries. Uh, uh, much more optimistic in terms of the grant coming yes. in. Okay, so the ADA grant is more of a long shot. Yes. Whereas the land grant, uh, is the land grant feds or state? That is state. That's state. <laughs> Chris? So I just want to say something generally about the, this idea of leveraging grants. Um, I'm very reluctant to leave somebody else's money on the table if it's at all possible for me to do so. But as I was thinking about the squeeze we were going to face tonight, I came to the conclusion that I wasn't going to let, I wasn't going to make, I wasn't going to let that make me buy something that I didn't want. And when I say didn't want, I meant in comparison to other things over which I have direct control of the money. So I think grants are important, but I also think that um, uh, there are going to be other grants at other times for other projects. And um, I, I, I'm not always going to be able. To, I'm not always going to be able to leverage the grant money that's out there. There's just that there's going to be some missed opportunities. Um, and I can't, I can't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to feel bad about it, but I'm not going to lose a lot of sleep over it. I'm going to try and do the right thing with the money there that I have direct control over. So. With all due respect to Wayne, who does a fantastic job, I think he's wrong on this one. I think, I think the priority should be higher. I think, because it's called a slow priority, it's a big mistake, and it's a civil rights issue. I think we shouldn't think of this as leveraging three to one or four to one. This is millions of dollars of natural recreational infrastructure that already exists that a significant portion of the population cannot access. So for those people, it's you know, an infinite uh, multiplier. Um, and that's where about half of the money is going, is for fixing sidewalks so people can get down and, mm -hmm. and fixing ramps that are really simple things that Northampton does a really bad job, like most places in Western Mass, uh, of doing. And all the older towns in New England generally do a really bad job for um, for accessibility, which is why you know when you look at where people with handicaps want to go for you know for college, they want to go to big state schools in the West where they're brand new campuses and not the old New England campuses that are beautiful and impossible to get around. So I think whether Wayne thinks it's a priority or not, I think it should be a priority for us. And the fact that we're going to get money for free you know, for putting what I think is, I don't see what other project this is going to squeeze out, to be honest. So I, I just think it should be something we should do. Even if, even if not, I don't agree with every line item on there, the big ones, I agree, should happen. And I, I think it should be done more. You know? So, Chad, from the Kyle's Kyle perspective? Um, I think there's other priorities. Um, not disagreeing with what David just said, but um, it's something that can be done at a later date. Um, whereas I don't want to miss some opportunities, but I do agree it's leveraging money right now, but I still don't know how the math is going to come out on the other projects. I'm torn. Who hasn't spoken to this, Julie? Mm -hmm. 
So we do talk about accessibility, at, at, and this is a recreation, you know, this is part recreation of the Recreation Commission. And, um, you know, some of it is enhancement, but a lot of it is repair. And, and, and our, our, some of our recreation areas, the bike path and, and some others, are really not accessible. And um, that's a great use of community money. We have great recreation areas, but we have a significant proportion of people who can't use them and uh, an aging population. I wish we could, I mean, I'm with you. I look at some of the lines and I, I would just like to see. I like, you know, we're back on the shade thing. I like shade, but I really would like to see uh, the accessibility gaps in our bike path taken care of more strongly. But it's a package, so I'll support the package. Uh, Chuck? I support this. Um, I think it's in, um, an ADA grant. I think I kind of liked what, how David phrased it. Um, I think we should make a statement um, about Northampton. Um, I don't think the ask is excessive. Um, and that's about it. Uh, Linda, you wait on this. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to wait again then. Um, I spoke generally about the relationship between our money and, and, and grant money, but I actually, I, I, am a, I do want to support this one. So, uh, but I, I use my time to talk about just this concept that, that the two are in a, inextric, inextricably connected. But, um, I, I'm with David. I think this is, um, and I should have been, I should have said that up front. I, I think that this is where the errors support. And once again, if the, if the um, ADA grant does not come through, then we will not, the CPC request will be withdrawn. Mm -hmm. So we really won't know a bunch of stuff until we meet again in June mm -hmm. regarding some of these. Uh, is there, Mark, do you, I think you said something already. Yes, yes. Uh, anybody else to speak to this? Are we good to vote? So the proposal is $66,200 to go into the shopping cart for the Park accessibility improvements. All those in favor? All those opposed? All those undecided? All those abstaining? <laughs> I'm just looking at the fact that we're on our way to spending every last dollar. We are. Yeah. Well, remember, we're in the shopping cart and we vote as they come out. I'm fine putting in the shopping cart. That's the okay. harder question is what to vote on. Yeah. <laughs> so are, we raising, are you raising your hand for the shopping cart? It's fine putting in the shopping cart. Okay. It's a self checkout. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is. All right. So uh, next on the list is the uh, Bird's Fog Multi Use Trail, which we had a lot of. I don't know why I was surprised, but uh, why, we had a lot of speakers speak passionately on that in the in the meeting a week ago. We had a lot of people speaking passionately on a lot of issues. This is the only one that we we have heard uh, about the grant. So the two hundred thousand dollars is in. If we do not fully fund, then the $200,000 uh, goes back. Uh, so it is, again, the only the only grant that we know. That grant was from where, Sarah? That is a federal grant. That, that, was, a, that was a federal grant. It's okay. the, this is the Land and Water Conservation Fund, which I don't think is going to be So this could be it for potentially. potentially. Uh, so is there a motion on the floor? Move to fund at $200,000. Uh, second? Second. Discussion? This, this seems so, like so a great project. I, I, when we first moved to Northampton, we looked at a house over there and we decided, you know, when our kids learned to ride bikes, this is too dangerous over here. So we didn't buy the house on. And so and it's game changing, I think, for a huge bunch of people who live over there. So, and as well as, you know, the circulation patterns through the city. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack from Conscon. Well, I I was also amazed at the response from the 
citizenry on this project. Uh, I thought at first it's something that could be put off to a later date when we had more money, but then the grant came through and <laughs> kind of forced our hand to, at this. But I, I do think it's uh, really worthwhile and it starts to use some of the green space that we have, utilizing it for the neighborhoods that are surrounding it. So it's a pretty spectacular project. Uh, to a recreation, did this come up through recreation at all? Or? I just discussed quickly, but you know, supported. This is a an area that it's an area that's having use, and it's an area that now could have directed use through this trail. Good recreation opportunity. Good active transportation opportunity too. Uh, Chris. Yeah, I, I actually found that, that portion of the presentation last week the most interesting was the, the non-recreation use of this idea that, that we're creating, um, you know, a citywide infrastructure, mm -hmm. um, which I think is a, a really worthwhile goal. I don't know how much further this gets us in that direction, but I like, I like that idea. Um, I think one of the problems that I see with alternative modes of travel is that the infrastructure just isn't there we're sort of cobbling it together mm -hmm. and um, yeah. if we can yeah if we can if we can actually do it in a comprehensive manner I think, you know, it becomes a lot <coughs> more attractive to people as an alternative so in fact as, as long as it remains sort of a piecemeal you know crazy quilt of things without a, without a, yeah. like an overall accessible except avenues of access it's it's just, it's never really good it's never really going to take off so this idea that we can tie pieces together i, I like it. i like it Martha? um i agree with that what everyone said i um i was a, a, a little bit um undecided after we went on the site visit mm -hmm. and the reason for that is i i think this is a and it's going to be an expensive trail to build just given the terrain out there um, it's very rocky, and um, we're not talking about putting in an unpaved path. It's the options, I think, are for um, asphalt or concrete, uh, which requires quite a bit of excavation, and it's a quarter of a mile, three quarters of a mile long. So that was my only reservation, it's just the cost of it. I don't know that this is going to cover the cost of building that. But I thought that the presentation, um, the advocacy was really great, and it really kind of changed my mind after listening to what everybody had to say. You know, the more people that can get out and walk, the better and recreate and connect. It's good. So I'm in support of it. I just hope that it can be made for this amount. Sarah, does any other city or somebody have any philosophy on cost over or something like that? Uh, there should be. I mean, there's always a contingency built in. I don't know how flexible this particular budget is. This was the maximum land board. Uh, Jeff? Um, I live more or less right across from that, <clears throat> from the area in question, and I'm, I'm in there every week at least uh, once. And um, I was very excited to, um, when we preserved that area in a, in a in a past session because um, since I moved in that area, it had always been um, speculated that it was gonna be developed. And my initial response to this was, um, I, think it's, I think it's an important project, but is it necessarily a priority given the limited funds that we have to spend? Um, but then the grant came in. <laughs> and this is one of these things where I kind of think look, we have to we have to act on this and do it. And I thought the I thought the public speak out last week was very pers um, persuasive, especially from um, our city councilor in Ward Six. Mm -hmm. And really, kind of, my daughter went to uh, Ryan Road School. I, I know about the. Uh, the transportation problem um, for Pitts Road is a total disaster mm -hmm. yeah. that I'm, I'm to the point where is this ever going to change 
um, believe it when I see it. So uh, this is another way to address um, uh, transportation from from one populated part out there in Ward 6 um, to another. And um, for that reason, I support it. Has everyone had a chance to speak? Um, I haven't, but I'd say much the same as everybody else. Any other comments? Okay, the proposal on the floor is $200,000 for the Birdsbog multi-use trail. All those in favor? All those opposed? Boy, we are spending our money. <laughs> you spent <laughs> almost all the money. Almost all. Right. We're in the shopping cart. We are in the shopping cart. Yeah. Uh, last but certainly not least is the Pine Barrens acquisition. Uh, once again, there's the land grant. We'll be notified till January. If that doesn't come through, this one is different. Wayne is still requesting the money, whether or not the state land grant comes through. Is that correct, sir? Yes. Yes. Uh, in the thought that somehow working the city's magic, private fundraising would cook in to make a difference? Is that? Hopefully. The ask? Uh, there, there is a little bit of padding in the book. Well, not padding, but Wayne was hoping to be able to accomplish some habitat restoration because parts of the site are really pretty badly degraded. So that's included in the CPA request. If the grant did not come through, all of the CPA requests would go towards acquisition instead. All right. Is there a motion on the floor for this? Fully fund the pond ground for acquisition at 118,160, acknowledging that the math doesn't add up in our shopping cart. Details, details. Second. <laughs> Okay, there are a motion and second discussion. Jack, you want to start with John's comment? Yeah, I think this is the jewel in the crown in this particular conservation go around. Uh, anybody that was walking out there could see the unique habitat and um, the prime location that this sits in in, this, in the city. So it's just a spectacular piece of property in it. It's already adjoining other conservation lands, so it just adds to the value of it. And it it's um, it's an opportunity in time as well, like so many of the conservation purchases end up being. So amazing, amazing piece. Thank you, Terry. Who else I'd like to speak? Uh, th this was the the main reason that I started my initial hesitation with the prior um, application because I wanted I wanted this one that first we needed to secure the secure the land and preserve it and then things like paths and and whatnot could be be dealt with down the road but I thought we had to we had to grab this first and foremost. Um, and this one's also close to where I live, and, and and I go by it and appreciate it, and I think it would be a real um, mistake not to not to grab this while we can. So, full support of this one. Well, it's not close to where I live, but I think it's a great piece of property. <laughs> it. We absolutely want to, want to support it. I agree with that one hundred percent. Who has not had a chance to weigh in on this? I just want to echo what, what Jeff said. I I I was I was ready to make cuts elsewhere to to, yeah. to make this one happen. Mm -hmm. So so uh, I support it too. I'm looking at the project budget. I'm looking at our budget, and I did hear not that it was padded, but that that there there is there the pro the property acquisition which is really what's most important right now. Um, uh, there's, a, there's some money in there for cleanup and ecological restoration, which is important work, but most important is the acquisition, I think. And so I'm 
willing, I, I think you should go into the shopping cart, and then I'm willing to look at the amount that goes in at some point if you wanted to. So Sarah, the land grant is for 128,000, correct? Correct. And the, uh, and so the match has to be what? The match has to be 206. So that 44,000 additional is entirely for cleanup and restoration. Because that, that's not an eligible land job. Land is only for acquisition. I'm sorry, say, wait. say that, say wait, that wait, again. Wait, wait, yeah. So the, the land grant uh, can only be used to fund acquisition. It can't mm -hmm. be used to fund this cleanup and ecological restoration. So the, that 44,000 above the land grant request, oh, no, I'm, I'm looking at the wrong column, I'm sorry. Uh, so this is 72 plus. So really, seventy four, one sixty is for land acquisition. Sure. Is yes. that correct? Yes. I'm and sure. then, and that satisfies the match for the property acquisition. It would, assuming that the land grant comes through. Okay. But then, oh, right. Yeah. Doesn't come right. Right. Exactly. Doesn't come through. I, right. no, I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> but what? So really, we should just fund two hundred thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I think we should put it in the cart and look at the amount, right? Yeah. That's another way to look at the yeah, amount, isn't it? Is, it is. Let's it's make cool. sure we get this property. Yeah. I know Wayne has other ways of trying to find money, but if we really want to make sure we get this property, we fund this property. Well, I think at that point, what we do is we wait and see what happens with the grant, and then yeah, I know. Then we go can back. Come back. Yeah. 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 But there's not money to come back to. <laughs> <laughs> well, there will be some. We don't know what. Green money. We don't know when. Yeah, we, we don't know when. And we don't know what the what the status right. of, the, of the other grants are. But what I what what I'm hearing from Julia is theoretically the request really is for 74, yeah. 160. Right now. Right now. And then if that grant doesn't come, mm -hmm. then we're adding another 128,000. What's, what's the time frame on the? On the agreement to buy, yeah. Uh, <coughs> sometime this fiscal year, I'd have to check the exact date. Okay, so <coughs> it it could come back in the spring. Mm -hmm. uh, if in fact the land grant, I, I completely agree that the cleanup and ecological restoration, well, important um, in some respects. Um, is secondary to the acquisition and the production. But also, um, just in terms of some of the other acquisitions that we've seen over the years, um, there's a very developed trail network on this piece of property, so we don't have to wait around for the friends of the Pine Barrens to come along and build trails, or, you know, I think that, that's the sort of way to go. And uh, in terms of use for people, Jeff and others, uh, could use this right away. Mm -hmm. so. but, sir, sir, the cleanup and ecological restoration is something that could wait, correct? Uh, it, it could. Some of it is critical to, um, just to be able to permanently protect the property with the conservation restriction on it. Um, so addressing the cars and some of that bigger equipment that's out there. Uh, but any future activities to restore the species habitat or planting. And we don't know how to tease out the cars and the junk removal no, from the no. building. It really does say invasive species treatment, just saying. Not kidding. No. It does. <laughs> that's, it does. Yeah. Just, that's when you bring in the roundhouse. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's not a vegetable <laughs> garden. I know, but. Yeah. So the, it is the removal of the junk no. cars, tires, and other debris that is essential to getting people to safely <laughs> recreate. Yes. Yeah. And to make sure that the conservation restriction that they have in place any You cannot place a cons conservation restriction on junk cars, tires, and other debris. Uh, <laughs> Castro Castro's willing to identify things that need cleaned up in the future. The amount of stuff out there may likely But that's something that could be hashed out over the next months I and mean, once it's acquired. I mean, maybe the it conservation restriction is kept right away. But that would impact if, in fact, we were looking at lowering the request to the land acquisition costs only. Mm -hmm. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. But I think pretty, we, we can be pretty sure that Wayne's going to come for you know, additional money for the conservation fund and things that cover similar types of activities over the next 
maybe not next session, maybe next session, maybe the following session. So I'm hearing that we're we're keeping the ask at 118, 160, and not lowering it down to reflect simply the land acquisition. Is that correct? Who made the motion? Linda. Uh, me. Uh, yeah. So we're keeping it at the at the original. I would like to keep it at that. Okay. Did anyone speak to this who wished to? I don't think we all did. Martha. Um, it just in support of it. It's a great piece of property. A great site visit out there. Um, yeah, it's really, really worthwhile. Really, the use of our funds. Okay. Uh, any additional discussion on the Pine Barrens? Are we ready to vote? All right. The motion on the floor is 118,160 for the Pine Barrens acquisition. All those in favor? All those opposed. Okay, maybe someone can do it as well. I just added up and got in our shopping cart is $884,360. Yep. Is that correct? Yeah. So we have 799403 available to us. So 85,000. Sorry. <laughs> All right, say that again. 84,957 over. 84,957. Uh, so this is really the first time, I think, ever, at least since I've been here, that in our initial shopping cart, we've gone over our budget for the entire <laughs> two cycles <laughs> yes. in one cycle. Mm -hmm. So, and that's not something you should be laughing at. You should feel ashamed if you laugh. And if you laugh again, I'm going to ask you to leave. Uh, uh, Chris, do I need to see you after the meeting? Is there something you'd like to share with uh, um, uh, So, let's see. We're into the shopping cart now. Uh, if someone would like to suggest, before we go in through each individual item, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the item we would most likely look at for decreasing in the, uh, in the allocation is Village Hill. Um, so I would suggest lowering it to 200000 It's still a very sizable chunk. Okay. So that's, can we remove it out at our 300000 and make a new proposal? Is that okay to do at this point? Let's do that. So Linda's now pulled out, pulled out of the shopping cart at 300 slash a third of it and resubmitting into the shopping cart at $200,000. Uh, not what the process is, we will vote to put it back in the shopping cart at two hundred dollars if we vote and then, and then go through this. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, so Linda's got a motion on the, uh, for $200,000. Is there a second? Second. Do further discussion on this? Okay, fully fund, that would leave us with what? A, 12,000 or something? 15,000. Thank you. 15 and more once we get that additional stuff. Mm -hmm. So that'd be, that'd be a little bit less nice there. Okay, so the motion now, the new motion in the shopping cart is at 200,000 for Village Hill. All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay, so we have a shopping cart with $15,000 to spare and essentially nothing to move us into spring. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we could have a little general discussion if people want to comment on that, or we could begin going through each one and voting now. What, what's the time check? I, can't I, think, we're, I think we're, we're $64,000 low on our historic reserve, but we don't have $64,000 left. So I don't know that we can do this. Okay. Ooh, oh, thank yeah, you for drawing yeah. us on so I that. think we need to up. We actually have to go. Yeah. We either need to leave more money on the table or up the commitment to a historic project. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for. If you go back gotcha. to 150000 for Village Hill and take your 15000 and add 50, you're. We'll have money to decide in the spring. We'll have $1,000 left. Mm. <laughs> Thank well, you. plus we'll have more money, you know, so we'll know what we have. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any sense of the order of magnitude on that? 
Remember, Boston and Springfield is totally complicated thing. Yeah. And so uh, now, but are we talking like ten thousand dollars? Is it something? Really, I have no idea. Um, Boston's um, Boston's tax receipts are as much as the rest of the state. So it's like half. Uh, so they take up half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then Springfield's huge too. Yeah. But I, they may get a reduced amount because they came in late as part of that funding site. So I'm. I don't know how they're located. Um, Northampton always gets a little bit extra compared to other communities because we have the maximum 3% tax. Mm -hmm. So we, we get to go around twice, assuming that they do it that way. Again, we don't have details on that. We're, we're not talking anything of any significance. I certainly less than 100,000. Mm -hmm. Certainly less than 100,000. I, I would think significantly less. It's 10 million going into how many communities? About the then? 260? 260, which half of it goes to Boston, then a lot of spring just keep. Do we know what the original funding was before they readjust the budget? Does that might give us a sense of. Uh, for a state match? Yeah, like the overall state match budget for the whole state. Uh, I mean, it's just yeah. 10 million on top of some other numbers, so it would give us a sense of. Yeah, that's a good. There's no reason to think they would drastically change their system. Uh, in any event, while Sarah's searching for that, um, uh, Linda, do you have any interest in removing it out of the shopping <laughs> cart again <laughs> and making an alternative proposal? Uh, reverting to the 150000 for Village Hill and then upping the um, Forbes Library to 164. No, that would still not do it. That would, that would put us in the same... Took, like, oh, no, 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 oh, you're right. Off of no, 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 you're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, at least $1,043. Yeah. <laughs> but what did we decide? For a very what small grant. What was that proposal? I didn't the proposal was 150000 for Village Hill and increasing the Forbes Library um, by 64000 so it's 164000 The only other historical is the armory, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, well, let's start with one, which is the, uh, which is the village hill. Oh, yeah. That's not, that's not necessarily true, is it? Uh, we wouldn't have to start with that. We, we could start with upping Forbes to meet that uh, required set aside. Does someone want to make that motion? Do we want to go up uh, with the win with the Forbes windows another sixty four thousand, and that would fulfill our up, um, obligated set aside for historic preservation? Well, we kind of have to do that, right? Unless well, well we, you know, know, we could, we could hold back sixty four thousand right. dollars. Exactly. Yeah. I actually feel like we were in a good place with local funding for Forbes, and I think we have another, in the broad sense, worthy candidate for the money that we're asking to change how they're doing it, and I think we should, if we feel like we had a comfortable amount of money from Forbes, we should leave that money on the table, and we could still give it to Forbes in the spring, or we could give it to, uh, you know, who knows, there might be another, you know, there may be someone else in the spring. Yeah. I don't see, this doesn't change my thinking about Forbes particularly. I think in any event, we're not fully funding forms, so I don't, I don't see why we would commit it now if we don't have to. That would still require a reduction in funding from Village Hill, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that, that to that allow that set aside to remain in our, yeah. mm -hmm. not, not vote on. Chris? Mm -hmm. I, just to clarify, um, if we were following, I understand what Dave's saying, and I, I, I don't disagree. I, I think I'm comfortable with the 100000 for Forbes. I still would like to hear why the city isn't bonding the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, but that won't change this allocation issue. Even if they were to fund Forbes entirely, we'd still have to come up with 164000 in historic Correct. funding. So that, but I would still like to get an answer on that. Um, 
But I like the idea of, of just sort of leaving it where we are right now. But for a point of clarification, we can't just go back in the spring and up fund these various proposals. They have to apply. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Correct. you know, we theoretically we could end up in a situation if they don't, and I, I don't, I can't imagine why they wouldn't, but if they don't reapply, that we, we won't be able to fill that. But we've done that in the past. Well, it's not, not, not fulfilling the commitment. It's simply yeah. setting us up. Setting for, so, okay, for so we can, it, could, it could sit on the, yeah. we just couldn't, un, yeah, we'd have to say yeah. that yeah. anyhow. Got it. All right, okay. I'll move with that. Now, we have this recommendation to the armory that they may want to think about yep. putting in an application to get some more professional services. So that would be one thing. So I don't think it's a all bad. Just so getting the sixty four thousand. We I'm not sure we need to have a motion on that because we're not asking that the Forbes uh, library be increased, no. but are we pretty much in agreement that that's the way to go? Yes. Does anyone disagree with that? Okay, Linda, can you make a new motion taking out of the shopping cart again? I nice. said, uh, uh, Village Hill and back in the <laughs> sure. I would move that Village Hill be fund be at $200,000 be taken out of the shopping cart and Village Hill at 150000 be uh, put in the shopping cart. Okay. Second? Second. Is there a discussion on this? All those in favor? Opposed? Okay, can someone do the math? 734 360 is our cart. Say it again, 734. 360. Okay. And we're holding out 65043 and 64 of that is historic. 65043 remains. Yeah. And um, 64 is mandated as a required set aside in historic preservation. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm sorry, I was doing other math. So Village Hill went down to 150. 150. Okay. And that was the only thing that changed? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a lot more words. That's all. <laughs> okay. And I estimate we'll get about $70,000 from that extra. Oh, wow. Okay. So we might have yeah. been around. The community, I just sent you. Community Preservation Coalition actually kind of addressed the way the math is going to work. Yes. And if you do it out, it's if that's the about 70,000. Okay. So that would leave us with 70 plus 135,000, of which 65,000 is committed to historic preservation. Okay. So right now, within our shopping cart, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, we have $100,000 for Forbes Library. We have 100,000 for Florence Fields. We have 150,000 for Village Hill. 66,200 for the uh, park accessibility improvements. 200,000 for Bird's Fog and 118,164 pine jars. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's go through. Uh, remember last, last time we voted on the shopping cart as the cart and people had issues with that. So we're gonna remove items from the shopping cart and I think we're going to need a motion and a second for each time with sort of a final approval here. Is that, does that make sense? Yeah, sure. How to go through that? Okay. I think it's, let's, let's start at the beginning um, with uh, community gardens. Uh, so I think someone needs to make a proposal with, uh, with uh, zero funding for community gardens. I think we should do that. So can someone make that? I'll make the proposal that we do not fund the community gardens. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? All opposed? All right. Armory Historic Preservation. I move that we do not fund Armory Historic Preservation proposal. Uh, second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Forbes Library. Uh, move we funded at 100,000. Second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Village Hill? Linda, you're up on this. I'm sorry. Oh, we, 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 Florence Fields. 
I move we fund it on the Second? Second. Okay. Uh, discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Village Hill. Second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. Park accessibility. David, you're on for this. Okay. I move we. Fully funded at 66,200. Second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. Jeff, you're at Bird's Ball, so you get to move that we fund for 200,000. Second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, Jack, our conscom person? Uh, I move that we fund 118,160. For the Pine Barrens acquisition. Second. 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 All those in favor? All right. Ooh, pat yourselves in the back. Um, so let's, uh, what we did not do, time check? Quarter of nine. Quarter, Quarter of nine? Holy oh, right smoke, we spent 800 and whatever, 700 and whatever thousand dollars. <laughs> quickly. Uh, before we pack it in though, let's, uh, Sarah's going to bring back orders to City Council the next time we meet, which will not be until the first this Wednesday in December. Remember the first 45 minutes will be taken up with a representative from the Community Preservation Coalition. Uh, and then we'll move on to uh, to the recommendations. As part of that, there are conditions attached to these. So can we, or we, do we have enough energy to spend a little bit of time just going through and seeing if any conditions pop up to us and we can continue that discussion when we meet again in December, correct, Sarah? You can add those on to the city council yes, orders. Absolutely. Or, whatever. Or, or note them to the employment contract, whatever is appropriate. Okay, so can we go through these one by one and just see if folks have any certain conditions that come up? Um, with the community gardens, I think we're asking Sarah to suggest that uh, they not be advert the gardens not be adverse to coming back once there's a little more discussion uh, in terms of what how to proceed with the not meet issue. So Sarah, you're able to do that. Yeah. Uh, with uh, his, with the uh, Armory Historic Preservation, we ask that uh, you contact them, and we would certainly entertain a request for a proposal uh, that would give someone the authority to outline the scope of the work in a more coherent. Would that be a for a historic building study specifically? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for the Forbes Library window, we've asked it. Uh, a lot of work for you, Sarah, um, that you figure out why the city couldn't bond fully or commit fully to that. Uh, any other conditions on the window work were in the highest priority as determined by the architectural firm or, or the library itself, correct? Mm -hmm. So moving down. And I think we, are we elevating, this may be micromanaging, but are we elevating the Calvin Coolidge Library to number one as a I think they had identified the windows on the west side. Is there a decision? Yeah, and I think they had really thought that through. Yeah, they had pretty yeah. clear. They did. Yeah. So, yeah. however, like, whatever the priority is. Okay. So, any other conditions that we can think of for four? Uh, Florence Fields. Nothing. Uh, Village Hill. I, I recall someone, I want to say Martha, but maybe someone else had said this is not a lack of commitment, it's simply a lack of money. And that any sort of support that we can offer to go with our 150000 Yeah, yeah, Linda, you said that. Linda said that. Linda. Okay. Uh, anything else? conditions on the village hill. We used to go through all, remember all of the, has to be coming in at 90%, you know, those affordability 
ranges. We don't need to do any of that on this. To a certain extent, because there are so many other funding sources that will already be decided, um, sometimes the CPC has required something over and above either DHCD or CDBG. Yeah. If we're happy with what's proposed in the application, then we can just include it in the contract language. Okay, and we're happy. I think they have proposed a 99 year affordability. Um, the challenge just gets to be if, if the DHCD agreement is only for 30 years and we require 99, then they have to have some sort of support. Right, I think the language would have come up. But, yeah, but I think they would probably be going in for 90. My guess is it's 99 years for DHCD because that increases their score. So I think we've come up with language before that basically tracks with the DHCD. I think the application said that. So is that, do we want to reiterate that as a condition or do we just? I think we just, I think it, I think we just line up before that says that it will track the DHC. Okay, and you're comfortable with that, Jeff? Yes. Uh, where are we? Uh, park accessibility, conditions on that. There was some question we have to learn about some of these large, you know, lump sums that cover a bunch of stuff. And I can't, I thought we asked them to sort of come back with a list of where that stuff is at some point. And, you know, for some of the different sidewalk components. Maybe a follow up. It's itemizing. Well, it would certainly be nice for them to come at, if in fact the grant comes through and we fund this, of where, of what they did. Well, every little sidewalk patch should say, courtesy of the Right on the site. <laughs> yeah, plaque, raised <laughs> plaque. <laughs> right. <laughs> Trip over, yeah. <laughs> if he waits another season, another winter, there'll be, you know, infinitely more. <laughs> so, Dave, was there a request there for something? For a condition? I don't think it needs to be in the contract or anything, but... I just thought I would remember that we asked them that before. I'd be interested to see it. Or maybe it's later on that happens. I'm not going to sum up to concern for that. Okay. Anything else on that? Uh, only as a match for that particular grant. So it will automatically come back if the grant is not received. Uh, Bird's Ball Multi East Trail. Conditions? Pine Barrens acquisition. Uh, do we want to talk about it, if there's a way to delay some of the cleanup and ecological restoration that does not endanger the um, conservation restriction? That that could lower our amount. Is that that's not really a condition, is it? So, no, it's not. Don't mess with the boat. Don't mess with the boat. Yeah. Okay. So no, any conditions on that? No? Good to go. Sarah, anything you need from us? I don't believe so. Any other questions? Out in advance of the next meeting, and if you think of any other conditions, we can certainly add them. Okay. Uh, when is the next meeting? December fifth. December fifth. So the, again, the first forty-five minutes will be taken up with a presentation by. Uh, Stewart's uh, so we should be thinking of questions or uh, or issues that we want to uh, ask him, and then we'll move on to our uh, city council order, and that should be it. Oh, uh, sort of other business, not foreseen when the agenda was made. Uh, I, I believe the other agenda item on the fifth, correct me if I'm wrong, will be the election of a chair and vice chair. We have to do that in December, don't we? Uh, we, I think so we, we did. Uh, we sort of jumped around. Yeah. We could do it now or we could wait until the beginning of the next round. Uh, well, once again, if folks are uh, interested in being chair or vice chair, please talk to Sarah about that in advance, perhaps, of the next meeting or at least for the January. I thought we covered this. Mm -hmm. this no. Well, we have not. We need to vote. You we said need to about vote. the same things you said now. Yeah, yeah. we did. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Any other uh, business not foreseen when agenda was made? All right, we did good. Yes. Yeah. This was a tough one. All right, thank everybody. Thank you, audience. Oh, motion to adjourn. So, and second. second. And no one said.